what is the difference between the three principles and meditation? So at first, you'd see a lot of similarities in the content, in the words, and some of the philosophy in both approaches. So it might look like they're the same thing. And I'm going to do my best to explore the difference as I see it. Now, I'm not a meditation expert, nor am I an expert on the three principles, but I have been in that conversation and community for over seven years. So, in meditation, it is a practice. The idea is to quiet the mind by focusing on, depending on the approach in meditation, right? There's usually something you focus on, like your breath. Sometimes it's an object or a mantra. To let the thoughts come and go and allow yourself to settle. So it seems to me that there is both a practice and a goal in meditation. A goal to quiet the mind, for some people, it might even be to reach enlightenment, to raise your consciousness, and there certainly is a practice in it. Something you show up and do every day in order to learn this thing. Now, the three principles understanding has no practice, and there is no goal. The three principles understanding is about simply seeing how we work as humans, how we as this space or capacity of consciousness, this ability to be aware of ourselves, when this creative energy of thought comes in, lights up our experience and allows us to create our experience of reality so that it is never the outside world that we are feeling. It is only this experience of thought in our consciousness and mind being the aliveness and the the intelligence that's running throughout the whole. So in the three principles understanding, there's no practice to learn and there's no goal to get to. So one might understandably ask, what's the point? Well, it turns out that by seeing more about where our experience comes from, we begin to quite naturally and effortlessly choose more beautiful experiences because we see that they are available and put our attention in places that serve us better. We tend to stop using thought as a weapon to beat ourselves up and we start using it as a creative tool more and more, which means we enjoy our lives. And because it's not isolated to a yoga mat or a meditation cushion, changes happen, actions, our behaviors change across our whole life without effort. Because when I see that there is only one place my experience comes from. It's not my boss, it's not my partner, it's not the amount of money in my bank account. When I really see that, and the more I see about that, it's like I'm in a whole new world, and I am free. I am free to be in the experience I'm in, which is always amazing, right here when I'm present with it, no matter what is happening. Instead of in my thinking, where things come and go, where things feel good and then they don't. And what I see with people who practice meditation, they can also have the same experience because it's always happening. They have an experience of thought coming and going And if they see, the more they see about that, the more it will transform the way the world looks to them. But it's a rather 
long and arduous practice and also it's not the same as seeing it in your real life when you're not meditating. I see a lot of people who don't take it off the cushion and they think that when I meditate I feel amazing but they don't realize that we can live in a state of meditation. That we were born for that as children are. There are two, there are many, but there are two primary insights that I see people have in the three principles understanding that ha make the biggest difference. I'll share the two that I have seen more deeply lately that have created an experience for me that I didn't even know was available. I didn't see it. And one, they really both have to do with the power of thought. One is that my feelings, whatever I feel, it cannot hurt me. It doesn't hurt me to feel. Whether that's sadness or despair, whether it's anger, whether it's even suicidal thoughts and the feelings that come with them, it cannot hurt me. It feels painful, yes, but it actually doesn't hurt me. I'm designed to feel every feeling and for it to move through me. What this has done for me is I'm, I'm not resisting my experience like I was. I'm not afraid of fear. So it's not stopping me. It feels amazing. And the second thing I've seen more deeply is that thought does not mean anything until I give it a meaning. So a thought comes into my head, I don't have to believe it. In fact, it isn't true. It's just a meaning. But really seeing that, not as a concept, I'm like, oh my God, all thought is equal. And until I give it a meaning, it doesn't even have a feeling. It's just thought. These two things are amazing, have transformed my life. And the third experience, this general category that I've seen in the three principles, that makes a huge difference in people's lives forever, is kind of comes under the principle of mind, the oneness, a deeper experience of oneness with all things and this intelligence, this aliveness that guides us, that beats our heart and breathes our lungs, that is so practical. You know when we need to get a glass of water or when it's time to reach out to someone we care about. And really seeing that, the more you see about that, the deeper sense of safety and security because you always have what you need. Now, these things are always available, whether you choose to meditate, <laughs> talk and study and be in the Three Principles community and read those books, whether you pray and go to church and sing, it's always available. There's no how-to, there's no doctrine or dogma in the Three Principles, and there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's simply an exploration. And, as I will tell you, I find it to be an incredibly valuable one.